Sure. Uh, this is a project, it's a retrospective analysis. At UCLA, we were one of the first sites uh, to start PSMA PET in the US. We started in 2016. And, uh, Although PSMA PET is new and gives you new information, very rapidly the referring radiation oncologists started to act on it and act on these new findings. Um, and you cannot ignore what you see in the images, but there is no real guidance yet on how to use these images at best. So far, all the rules we have are based on conventional imaging and not on PSMA PET. And especially in radiation oncology management, uh, you have multiple things that you can play with, addition of ADT or not, the way you do your radiation fields, the dose you give, what numbers of lesions you target, and all these parameters you can play with. And so we try to look at this, uh, at this because now we have up to four to five years of follow-up, so we can harvest some outcome data. And at the end, it creates a single arm cohort, but very heterogeneous because we look at people who were treated with a radiation therapy-based management after the PSMA PET scan. Uh, but in fact, even in this group of patients, um, they, they get very various uh, type of management. So all these patients were in the BCR setting, meaning they had a recurrence of prostate cancer after radical prostatectomy based on PSA. The median PSA level was 0.6 in that cohort. Uh, we had about 200 patients. The median follow-up was about four years. And then we investigated what type of radiation they had and what were the outcome and if there were some uh, significant parameters that could be predictive of better response or not. And as always, and that's we rediscovered that with PSMA PET, the more you have disease on the PSMA PET scan, the worse it is. Whatever types of treatments uh, you got, the patient with metastatic disease discovered by PSMA PET has a, a worse progression free survival than the one that were M0. It's about five years versus three years. Um, so there is a significant difference there. Uh, then if you, like, uh, you look at refine, parameters of, of the treatment. There are some interesting findings that we start to, to discover. Initially, people thought that you could de-escalate the management uh, therapy, the therapy management based on the PSMA PET scan finding. If you don't see lesions on the scan, you don't need to treat that area. You can focus only on the areas where you see the disease. In fact, that's not what we observe. When you, we compare patients with a similar pattern, for example, the one that have uh, disease in some metastasis outside of the prostate, but no visible uh, disease in the prostate fossa, some were treated with targeted radiation therapy only to the lymph node or the, the bone metastasis, and some were treated to the, with metastatic directed therapy, and in addition, irradiation to the prostate. Um, there was a massive difference between the two groups. When you don't irradiate the prostate, you have almost 80% of recurrence. Um, when you do irradiate the prostate, even though you don't see any disease in the prostate bed, then uh, the recurrence rate was much lower, around 30%. So this is kind of the finding we try to, to, to show here. Because it's retrospective, it's uh, not easy to do. And I think now the good thing is that many trials worldwide are undergoing trying to prospectively and in a randomized fashion uh, try to assess these questions based on the PSMA PET scan findings. PET scan positive, PET scan negative. You randomize the patient to di different treatment management. And so in a few years, I hope we'll have better and clean answers to, uh, for these questions.